I'm delighted to be here. And thanks, thanks for uh, the kind introduction. Uh, I, uh, I am going to uh, start by a self-examination of our field. Okay, so you know, I know what you are all thinking. I mean, I'm talking about the brain. Why would a computer scientist think and or speak about the brain? And uh, you are absolutely right. For the longest time, uh, computer scientists were thinking about the computer, right? You know, and uh, uh, in retrospect, it's hard to believe that uh, such a large group of intelligent adults were obsessed with the computer. But we were, I was, I was obsessed with the computer. Okay? You know, we, were, we liked the computer so much that we made the tactical mistake of giving uh, our field its name, okay, our discipline its name. Uh, so, uh, uh, but uh, those times are gone, okay, and, and, uh, and, uh, 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 but thinking about a computer was, uh, First of all, not easy, right? You know, we had to solve uh, an incredible number of engineering problems, okay? And also come up with uh, perhaps the most important uh, problem in mathematics and, 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 uh, and uh, one of the great questions in science, uh, whether, uh, whether uh, 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 exhaustive search is ever necessary, whether P equals MP. Uh, but Around 25 years ago, this was all over, and, uh, and uh, uh, the internet came, and immediately we realized that uh, this is what we should study, okay? you know, that, the, that the new reality is not, you know, the computer is passé, and uh, the new reality is the internet. Uh, and this was, uh, this was uh, an amazing uh, point of inflection for our, for our field, okay? because, first of all, our field became a physical science. In natural science, in the following sense, that the internet, you know, everything else was constructed. The internet was being constructed, it was being designed. Okay, so you know, it, it, it surprised us. It, it, so you know, it, it came to us. It emerged. Okay, to get started. And uh, uh, as a result, we had to approach it the same way that physicists approach uh, approach the universe. Okay, so you know, with, uh, with uh, humble ignorance. Okay. Uh, and uh, we had to, we had to uh, understand it through experiments, uh, hypotheses, and things like that. Okay? So, so it became, became a natural science. We also became a social science, because the internet is about people. Okay? And if you don't understand people, their cognition, their, their incentives, their feelings, uh, you, don't, uh, you, know, you cannot understand the internet. So, uh, so it was an incredible transformation for the science. Okay? And slowly, uh, with the internet, we realized that the true object of our of our of our investigation is the universe. Okay, so you know that uh, by universe I mean uh, quantum physics, network dynamics, behavior, statistical physics, economics, and game theory. Uh, you know, we really realized that what uh, what we that that studying the computer for so many years it made us very very sharp in a particular direction. Okay. Uh, it made us understand computation like nobody else before. And as a result, uh, what happens occasionally, not always, not even often, but sometimes, uh, when a computer scientist thinks about a problem in another science, uh, then uh, when unexpected progress happens, okay? And this has happened in all of these fields. That's sometimes called the uh, computation as a lens or the algorithmic lens, computation as a lens on the sciences. And it really means, roughly speaking, and I'm sure that it's, it's known to all of you, that uh, if, uh, uh, that all you have to do is you have to fantasize that the object of your study, it could be a bunch of hydrogen atoms or, or, or the cell or uh, 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 a market, that okay? the object of your study is trying to compute something, okay? And then, so you know, special will start uh, start turning, and and uh, and uh, as I said, unexpected uh, progress happens. And I mean, you know, I, there, I'll just I'll just remind you a couple of things that that, that I happen to be involved with, that uh, 
uh, it gave the economics uh, one of the one of the great achievements, and which marked the you know the the, uh, the new era of economics. Uh, in 1950 was was uh, which proved that uh, everything has an equilibrium. I mean, you know, and it was a, really a, 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 a very important moment for economics. First of all, because it inspired other equilibrium theorems, like like the other equilibrium theorem, but also because it gave a license to every economist uh, to whenever they contemplate a new a new market or a, or a, or a, or, a, or an institution to design, to say, let's see what happens at equilibrium. Okay, so and the point is that uh, that uh, a computer scientists working. Uh, uh, on this, discover that finance equilibrium is one of these intractable problems, okay? one of these search problems that, that, that require lifetimes of the universe to be solved. And as a result, in some sense, the license that economists had has been revoked for computational reasons. You know, so, uh, uh, and and this, uh, this is transforming um, the field of economics. Uh, another another uh, 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 another interesting work uh, that sort of suddenly decides with, uh, with, uh, with uh, your colleague uh, Billy Nutt uh, from, from uh, U of Hyper, uh, who is present here, uh, uh, is, is that, uh, is that uh, 160 years after, 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 the, after Darwin, uh, we realize computer scientists working together with biologists that the evolution of population genotypes, in other words, how one generation of, of plants or animals uh, goes to the next one, uh, is that amount of the genes playing a repeated game where the repetitions are the generations and the genes play and, and the alleles of the living gene are the strategies available to this allele and uh, uh, the probabilities with which uh, the genes are playing these strategies are precisely the frequencies of these alleles in the population. And, uh, uh, the amazing thing is that is that uh, what they, what they, what what these uh, genes are playing uh, is uh, are executing is uh, the Adamus algorithm. Okay, so you know, multiplicity makes a big, uh, which is uh, uh, if you believe the popular press, it's one of the five uh, most important uh, uh, AI algorithms. Okay, with back propagation. Okay, so uh, um, uh, you know. Uh, uh, and then, uh, when uh, when uh, we are being and match uh, uh, we realize this that this sort of uh, interesting fact, uh, Umesh uh, looked back and said, uh, uh, you know, now I have more confidence in evolution. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, and uh, what I want to. Uh, the, Talk now is 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 about the brain. Okay, so uh, the last uh, five and a half years, I've been uh, I've been pursuing this question. I mean, I've been doing some other things, but this is sort of what keeps me up at night. And uh, and uh, also it's uh, it's uh, probably the steepest hill, the steepest mountain I ever I ever I ever tried to to, to climb. Okay, you know, so it's it's uh, 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 an incredibly difficult task. Okay? So. So how do you think about this thing? I mean, and what we know is that the, real, the way to think about, about the brain is, uh, I mean, no, you really have to buy this book, okay? So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 2000 page book. It's called Principles of Neural Science. And uh, it's really an amazing book. You know, you know I bought it five, five and a half years ago. I think I bought it three times since, you know, and, and, and you know, because it changes, it's, uh, it's updated. And, uh, and, uh, 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 you know, nobody reads this book. I have not read it. I think I have read the sentence from every page. You know, so, you know, but, but, uh, uh, but the point is that every few years, every four or five years, this book is edited, has a new edition. And every edition is 230 stickers. And if you think about it, that's not right. Okay? The title of this book is Principles of Neuroscience. Science. Principles should shrink, right? You know, when the Greeks set out to find the principles of mathematics, they, they ended up with four lines, right? And right? so, what is that? Okay. You know, it? You know, it, it means that the field is, uh, is, uh, is really not making really progress. Okay? That despite the avalanche of amazing results, okay, of, of, of incredible insights, incredible techniques, okay, so you know, it's the field is 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 is, is mushrooming. It's 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 spinning ahead, 
But in some sense, it's it's uh, Martian speculation. Okay. You know, so, uh, 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 and uh, and that was captured. I mean, oh, uh, this is my hero in in this field. It's uh, his name is Richard Axel. He's my colleague at Columbia. Uh, he's one of the agents I moved from Berkeley to Columbia, and and. Uh, uh, he got a Nobel Prize uh, in, uh, 14 years ago, 13 years ago, for his uh, incredible work on olfaction, on the smell, how, how mice smell. Uh, but, uh, you know, so, uh, about a year ago, uh, in an in a interview he gave to the main magazine, the main, main uh, journal of, of the CACM of neuroscience, uh, he uh, uh, he said this, okay, when, you know, that we do not have a logic for the transformation of neural activity into thought. I view this setting, this logic as the most important visual direction in neuroscience. So I was, I mean, you know, it took me days to recover from this, or from the, you know, that, so my hero is basically, you know, he didn't know that I was working on this, right? You know, so uh, this is exactly what I've been working on, okay? So, you know, this is, this is the story I want to tell you, right? I mean, what, uh, because, uh, I mean, so the, the question now is, uh, what kind of formal theory? You know, when he said that we are looking for a logic, immediately I thought, I'm in business. Okay, so you know, I, 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 I'm on the right track. Uh, you know, so what kind of formal theory would verify that? Okay, that's, 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 uh, that's sort of the main, the, main, uh, the main question I'm going to talk about. Uh, and... Uh, and uh, 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 the point is that uh, I work with, with, uh, with several computer scientists and neuroscientists. Uh, my colleagues is my colleague at Columbia, he's into natural language processing. Daniel Kopolsky is a student who advised. Uh, Wolfgang Mars is, is, is a computer scientist and neuroscientist at Graz, and Santos Nepala works in uh, theory and learning. Uh, and uh, Larry Abbott is, is uh, sort of a legendary uh, theoretical neuroscientist at Columbia. So um, we have, we you know, we have been working on this, and uh, we have, we have something to say. Okay, so that, that's that's what I'm going to tell you today. Is this clear? I mean, you, you understand the problem. I mean, also, and I mean, I hope you appreciate the problem. And if you think that we did make much progress, uh, you will excuse us. Okay, right. So, okay. So, uh, all right. So, um, okay. Uh, so let's start somewhere very low, very. Very, uh, very humble, right? And, uh, so let me let me tell you a story. You know how how flies uh, smell, right? And, uh, so remember smells. Uh, so basically, flies uh, they uh, they can smell only fifty things, okay? Fifty substances. So we can smell five hundred things. Rats can smell fifteen hundred. Okay, so. Uh, 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 and, and uh, so they have receptors in their noses that, uh, that uh, catch 50 different kinds of molecules, right? I mean, so, uh, and then what happens is that these receptors excite these neurons here, 50 neurons, one for every one of these kinds of smells. And so what happens here is that you have a 50 dimensional vector, okay? And then something amazing happens. But this 50 dimensional vector is projected up to 2,000 dimensions, okay? Because these are, these are, a, 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 uh, uh, these are the 2,000 canyon cells. 50, 50 dimensional vector becomes a 2,000 dimensional vector. And then a, 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 sorry, you know, a, 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 a neuron, a, there's a neuron here which inhibits this, okay? Makes them more and more selective in weather fire. And as a result, out of these 2,000 cells, there are only uh, one, let's say, 100 millions, right? So in the end, so we know this becomes a, a, a sparse 2,000 vector that has about, about uh, 200, let's say, ones, right? So that's, uh, so that's the story. And uh, this, uh, this vector, this binary vector is going to be the memory that the fly has about this matter. Okay. Uh, so this is. Uh, 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 so this is an important. Uh, uh, this is something very important. Okay. So 
What happens from here to here uh, is, I believe, very important and happens in our brain as well. We call it uh, random projection followed by cap. Okay, in other words, you project, you get a random vector, and then you cap it. By cap it, I mean that you only take the largest elements and make them one, and you forget the other one becomes zero. Uh, 100 winners out of 2,000 take all. Okay, this is, this is what, it, what, it, what it takes. So it's 100, not 100, as I said. Uh, uh, and, uh, but, wait a minute. I said random projection. How do, you, how do you know that this is random, right? I'm not going to, do, to bother you with details, but believe it or not, somebody killed a fly, uh, found this network, the adjacency matrix of this network, and it is random, okay? So this is the adjacency matrix of this network. And the bottom line is that it, 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 it resists all statistical tests. It looks like a uniform random. Okay? Uh, so, um, and when I say uh, random projection and gap, I mean by random projection you get some Bernoulli distribution, some Gaussian distribution, and cap means that you take the k largest ones, okay? k in that case happen to be 100. Is this clear? So that's what I mean, R, P, and C. Good. Uh, and it turns out that uh, R, P, and C, uh, this, uh, this presents similarity. What do I mean by that? That if you, if you have, imagine now that you have an n by n by bipartite graph. You know, how many, how many there on the right doesn't matter much. The fly uses, uses an expansion for good, good purposes, but let's forget that. Uh, so imagine that you have an n by n bipartite graph random by Barclay graph. And you select A out of this, out of this K, uh, uh, out of these N nodes, and then you do the random projection. And as a result, you get, uh, you get a cap of A. All right, so that, that's, that's, let's call it this way. Uh, and then you do the, follow, you repeat the same, the same for another set B. And the question is, if A and B overlapping alpha times K, K nodes, in other words, if they are overlapping alpha percent, what will happen there? And it turns out that you can do that. You can make a calculation, and you get a function which looks not linear, but for the, for the numbers in the fly, it's very linear. Okay, I'll, I'll show you what it is. Uh, 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 so um, so the, uh, this is the 45 degree line that would say that it's preserved exactly. This is our lower bound. And uh, the blue line is uh, what uh, simulations do. Okay, so uh, it's very, it's very well preserved. Okay, so so similarity is very well preserved. So this is an, an incredible because you realize the fly needs to remember similarity. Okay, because if two smells are similar, then the effects are going to be similar, right? I mean, so you have to either go go for it or flee, right? I mean, so that's that's uh, okay. So, uh, I think I bother you enough with the fly, okay? Let's, let, let's go somewhere else. Uh, 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 the question is, does this something like that happens in our nose? And that's uh, in our brain. And the answer is yes. And, and this again, uh, you know, uh, this again by, by, uh, by Axel, uh, you know, uh, an amazing paper, where, which was sort of you know, the, the inspiration for what follows. So, Long story short, mammals independently discovered exactly the same, uh, the same uh, mechanism, okay? And so, we have receptors, in our case, in the rat's case, many more, 30, 30 times more. Then, then they go, it goes to these, which are now the right hand, the left hand side of this bipartite graph. Uh, uh, it's called uh, uh, olfactory bulb, it lies just behind here, uh, it's part of our cortex. And then, from there, they are projected to something called the piriform cortex, uh, PC, over there. Uh, and, uh, uh, but there is a difference here, okay? That we are more complicated animals like, 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 like flies. And here, you know, so a trivial aspect of this complexity is that in the piriform cortex, there are recurrent connections, okay? That, uh, that neurons within the piriform cortex uh, go back to neurons in the piriform cortex. In the fly's mushroom body, there are no recurrent connections, right? Okay? So here things are more complicated. So something more interesting is going to happen, okay? 
And let's see what's, what's going to be. And this is how Axel describes it in the discussion section. We know, when I read this paper, I went to the discussion section because, because Axel got a Nobel Prize for the discussion section of his 1995 paper. Okay, so, so here's what he says in the discussion section. So he predicts something that I think is very, very seminal, very important. An odoran may cause a small subset of piriform portal neurons to fire. Inhibition triggered and by this activity, so in, you know, like in, in, the, in, the, in the mammal as in the fly, uh, this excitation excites the inhibitory neurons and the inhibitory neurons fight back, okay? And they say quiet, quiet, quiet. And, you know, so we have a lot of inhibitory neurons because without inhibitory neurons our brain would explode, okay? So, you know, so, so you know, they, they, they basically say, take it easy, nothing, you know, it's not, it's, you know, it's not as, as important as you think, you think it is. Um, and uh, if this is triggered by this activity, we will then further fire. This small fraction of cells will then generate sufficient recurrent excitation to recruit a larger population of neurons. You see what it says? It says that these cells, together with the initial source of, of excitation, now they're going to excite some other population of cells. And in the extreme, some cells will receive enough recurrent input to fire without receiving initial input. So, so here is what, let's do it in pictures, that this is a set of spiking neurons. This is, this is the olfactory bulb. But uh, more generally, some area, some brain area. And it, it spikes, this spiking creates by random projection and cap, and a particular population of neurons here, because that's how we remember things, okay? There are three populations of neurons. Uh, and uh, then, both of these fire, and as a result, this area receives two kinds of excitation, from here and from here. And as a result, a new set of winners happens, right? Everybody understands? You have a new set of winners. You know, in other words, the, the balance of power shifts, right? And, and, and a new junta, so to speak, a new uh, uh, set of neurons uh, comes to being. They fire, and as a result, a third one, uh, and so on. Okay, so basically, uh, what you have is a sequence of, you know, as things, this thing keeps firing, you get a sequence of uh, winners, the blue, the red, the green, who knows what next, okay? And the natural question is, uh, does this process converge? Uh, also, very important, heavy and plastic, what does it mean? It's the following. What did Herb said in, in uh, 1949, that what he expected is that if two neurons fire together, then their connection gets strengthened, okay? And that, so you know, that's still, you know, we know much more about plasticity, but that's still sort of, you know, the essence. That once this has fired, and as a result this fire, their connection gets strengthened. So the point is that when you fire, and your firing causes somebody else to fire, this connection gets strengthened. And intuitively it's clear that you need this in order to guarantee some kind of convergence, right? Okay, so, and yes, because of plasticity, Things will converge. The answer is, does the process converge? Yes, because of plasticity. And does it in, in, the, in the fly brain, you don't need plasticity. But here you need plasticity, otherwise you will be firing forever. And does it preserve, and you will get no stable memory. And does it preserve similarity? And the answer to both questions is yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, I'll show you something that you don't see often, okay? So, you know, I'll show you a mathematical model of the brain, right? Um, this looks like a losing proposition, right? You know, but, but, but I think that for the, for, the, for the special reasons that I want to talk to you about, uh, that's a good model of the brain. So, what is a brain? It's a finite number of brain, brain regions, brain areas. It contains n neurons. Think of them as being in the tens of millions, okay? Uh, some pairs of areas are connected by directed graph, the random graphs. So, uh, so this area has connections towards this area, and this area is, is bidirectional. And they all have recurrent, recurrent connections, right? So these are 
I'm an theoretician as a Hungarian scholar GMB, okay, so in Erdős Rényi graphs, and these are directed as Erdős Rényi graphs, okay? Uh, and you know that, 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 that the situation in the fly is a directed Erdős Rényi graph. Uh, so, uh, uh, the neurons fire in discrete steps. So imagine that at some point, something here fires, okay? As a result, maybe something here will fire. Not maybe, of course, definitely. And then the, the process will, this process will, will, will create uh, uh, a set of neurons, uh, a stable set of neurons, as I told you before. Um, so connection between areas can be enabled and disabled. So that's a very important assumption, that uh, there is some kind of global control that says, uh, in this particular set, uh, these, uh, these connections are not, are not, are not in play. Right? So that's, that's a major assumption, right? So this is how you control what happens. Right? But there is some global control, and we know that such controls exist. I mean, we have found them in animals. Uh, but, but uh, you know, that this area is inhibited, okay? Nothing happened there. Uh, and there is plasticity, that if a neuron I has a connection to neuron J, and I fires, and in the next step J fires, the weight of uh, the, the, the synapse IJ is multiplied by 1 plus beta, where beta is some kind of, uh, uh, think of it as 5%, okay? Uh, or 10%. And also there is uh, more things like forgetting, uh, that so you know things things are forgotten as time goes by, but they don't they don't they don't affect much our theory. Okay, so the, you know you should think as uh, beta something like ten percent, the probability of connection about one in a thousand, uh, and as uh, something like hundred millions, and and k to be like the square root of that. Okay, k is the number of you know how many fire in every region are there. So this, I mean, uh, if you ask yourself, okay, what should I remember of what probability means you said? Okay, no, this is not a bad, a bad choice, right? You know, so this is, you know, this is, this is a, I think, a nice, a nice model of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, much of what happens in the brain. No, okay. Uh, and the main ideas, I repeat, uh, so what makes this model work? Three forces, randomness, selection, and plasticity, okay? These are the forces that uh, of life, right? I mean, you think about, you know, uh, randomness, selection, and learning, right? I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's, how, that's, that's how we live by. Okay. Uh, and what we prove, have been proving for three years with Sandoz, you know, it's, 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 it's a difficult theorem, is that, is that uh, the projection process converts exponentially fast with high probability and the total number of cells involved. So basically, it, uh, it not only it converges, but there is also a preservation of similarity. And, uh, uh, and uh, the number of cells, uh, sorry, no, the speed of convergence and how, how many cells are in total are involved depends on the, on the plasticity. If the plasticity is, lar is, 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 is large, large enough, then it's going to be uh, very few, it converges fast, and it always converges fast. I mean, after a dozen, a dozen, a dozen uh, iterations, it has almost converged. But uh, if plasticity is very small, then you get, you get some kind of uh, a slower convergence. And, uh, uh, and uh, here are the, the simulations. Uh, what you get is, you know, the different kinds of different plasticity, so for uh, really small plasticity, uh, you barely convert. Okay, but for for larger plasticity, you get you get uh, you get a very fast convergence. Okay, and this is this is uh, this is uh, how convergence happens. Uh, this is uh, how much each uh, you know how much every circle intersects with the next one. In the beginning, it's like fifty percent. Uh, but then, so it, it, uh, it rapidly goes down, and finally it, it, uh, it vanishes. Okay, so, uh, so the result of such a projection, let's call it an assembly of neurons, okay? This is not a new thing. Uh, 
Assembly is not something that I, I and my friends thought about. Uh, this is uh, now all news in neuroscience. Okay? We always suspected that that's how memories are, are, are remembered. But uh, now we are sure, we have seen it in mass. Okay? So, you know, not only we have seen it once, but so, you know, there are labs that work on that. Okay? You know, the, they, they see it every, they create mice uh, whose assemblies, so, you know, literally light up the room. Okay? You know, so, so, and, and so, so they, they uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, a set of about K neurons in the brain area yeah, who's firing in a pattern, usually, you know, here I'm, doing, I'm, I'm making the convenient but indefensible assumption that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, all neurons light in unison, okay? That's not true, okay? So, but it's very convenient. But I also suspect that it does not change much in reality. Uh, it's mathematical convenience. Uh, uh, but, you know, but assemblies really, they don't all light up together but they light in a pattern, okay? You know, if the, the musical metaphor is that assemblies are not an octave, but they are a chord sequence, okay? Uh, so, uh, uh, is that amounts to our thinking of a particular memory, concept, name, word, episode, and so on, and so on, okay? So, so uh, every assembly is a memory. Uh, and that's, as I told you, have said it first, uh, 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 70 years ago, but uh, uh, these people, this is the first, uh, first uh, author, uh, you know, first saw it, uh, then saw it again, now they see it all the, all the time, okay, and, and, and uh, they are assemblies, uh, and, uh, and uh, we also, you know, these are experiments and our simulations and other people's simulations also show that assemblies uh, exist, all right, I mean, you know, and, so, I mean, you, know, you remember that, uh, that um, uh, you know, the legend of the grandmother cell, right? I mean, you know, that, that we have a cell in our body, in our, in our brain, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, is that amount of thinking that we have time in fire, so I think of our grandmother. You know, this is nonsense, okay? Here is why. Because one cell can do nothing, okay? Uh, but 30,000 cells, that's not fair. Okay, so it's not grandmother cells, it's grandmother cells, okay, so there is a population of tens of thousands of cells that, you know, and now they're not called grandmother, they call, you know, this is, this is the new grandmother, okay, you know, so it's, it's Jennifer Aniston, right, I mean, so, so they're called Jennifer Aniston cells, how many of you have heard this, uh, how Jennifer Aniston cells, okay, because in the 90s, they noticed that, uh, you know, that, that some people, when they saw that the picture of Jennifer Aniston, they saw the pictures of famous people, you know, could be called jo uh, John Travolta cell, but, but for some reason they chose Jerry Fernandes, okay? You know, so, uh, uh, that some people say, you know, th there are cells that, that light up when they see Jerry Fernandes. So, an amazing thing is that they also uh, light up when they hear her voice or when we see her name in print, okay? So, so it's sort of, you know, they're, they're very clever cells, I mean, you know, they're, they're, they are total object cells, okay? So, um, uh, whole object cells. So, uh, or sometimes they're called concept cells, so maybe perhaps a much better name. By the way, uh, after this talk, you are going to have not only Jennifer Aniston cells, but you are going to have Jennifer Aniston cell cells. <laughs> but don't go this way. <laughs> okay, so, um, all right, so. Uh, so, you know, as I told you, you know, I, I, I confessed my methodology, okay, you know, I, I can't, you know, the only way for me to think about a thing is think that it's computing something. Okay? The question is, where does the computation happen? Okay, so what is the right level, computation in the brain? I mean, you know, many people have been thinking about that. And, I mean, you know, molecules are definitely, you know, of course there is computation in molecules, okay? You know, that's where it all starts. I mean, you know, there is amazing computation in molecules. Uh, uh, spike in neurons and synapses. Yes, there is computation there. I mean, on, and, and people got Nobel Prizes for understanding how this computation happens. Okay? Uh, some people, no Nobel Prize yet, but some people believe that dendrites of these neurons, that's where the really the computation happens. Okay? That, that, that really what, uh, you know, that the dendrites are computation trees. Uh, and uh, maybe they're right. I mean, or certainly they're right. I mean, the question is how important is this part of the computation. And then there are cognitive scientists who are uh, 
uh, do whole brain computation in the following sense. They do experiments and then, uh, then uh, they say, see, it's like uh, these uh, subjects, the brain, the brain is as if it's executing this program. Okay? So basically there is whole brain computation. Uh, and the question is, uh, how about this gap? Okay? There's a huge gap here, right? And I think when Axel, Axel says about the logic, he means this, 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 uh, this, uh, this area here. Okay? We need something right smack in the middle of this area. Uh, and uh, and uh, so remember, let's remember this. And uh, so here is my hypothesis. Uh, there is an intermediate level of brain computation, right where the question mark was implicated in carrying out high, higher cognitive functions, such as reasoning, planning, language, storytelling, math, music, science, giving talks, all these things, okay? Listen to talks. Uh, assemblies are its basic representation, its main data structure. So now we are talking about the programming language, which to our credit, we did not call the assembly language, okay? You know, so, uh, <laughs> uh, what are its fundamental operations? Okay, so, you know, let's, let's say that we want to create a programming language whose data structure is the assembly, okay? What are the fundamental operations? So that's, that's what, and, I mean, oh, this sounds like an invitation to go out to a hunting, okay? That, but there are rules, okay? Let's, let's put some rules. An operation, in other words, you can't sit back and say, well, what how about uh, this, okay, sort of, you know, uh, like learning, okay, or something like that, okay, things that you want. You know, a variance must be both useful and plausible. Useful means that uh, if you assume that assemblies do this operation, this explains another experiment, okay, that, that, that it's compatible and then actually in a compelling way compatible with, uh, with what we know about the brain. And uh, plausible means that you can prove that uh, this can be combined down to uh, spiking neurons and synapses. Okay? To the, to the next level now. Uh, and uh, and uh, so that's, that's what I'm saying here. And uh, uh, one operation that I told you about is project. Let's call it project XAY, which means an existing assembly X will be projected to an adjacent area A and call the result Y. This is a little like Y gets X, okay, the, the assignment. But it's very different from assignment. Because Y and X in programming in the in 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 uh, uh, in, in uh, Algol, in sorry no, in Fontan, in, 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 in Python can then go on and live uh, forever. Uh, so you know independent life. But here, X and Y are in a, in extricable, in a straight connected. Okay, they, they, are, they are together forever. Not forever, forgetting happens, but forever. Uh, uh, so, we... This is how assemblies are created, but also, this is how assemblies go on to live an independent life, okay, further and further away from the original from the origin, which is the hippocampus. Uh, other operations and two assemblies may be associated by sharing cells. Okay, in other words, two assemblies may share cells. Okay, and when they share cells, uh, they, you know, the, the, the semantics is that they are close to each other. They are somehow related. Okay, let me let me show you an amazing experiment. Okay, so let me first show you what I mean. That first of all, these these pulsate, okay, they spike, and as a result, okay, let me go back. These are assemblies that were projected. This projected to this, and this was projected to that. Now, if they fire together, which means that they co-occur, okay, they are correlated. Then, in response, these these assemblies may choose, may will. Uh, some neurons from this assembly will migrate to the other, and some neurons of this assembly will, will migrate to this. And some neurons of this assembly will be lost. Okay? And as a result, they will look more like that. 
Is this clear? Okay, remember that the size of this assembly is clear, is, is we're assuming it's constant, okay? Which is okay, another assumption, but, but I think it's a... So let, let me show you an experiment. Uh, so basically, they, they recorded from one cell in one patient's uh, uh, medial temporal lobe, okay? So, uh, 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 media, you know, so where is the medial temporal lobe, okay? Right, so uh, let's ask somebody who should know. Where, where is the medial temporal lobe? Okay, so. Does he know what you think? Okay, he knows, all right. So, uh, yeah. so, so here's the experiment. They, uh, they, uh, they recorded from the medial temporal lobe uh, one neuron. They recorded from 100, for 200 neurons and from 20 different patients. Uh, they showed them 200 pictures. But I mean, oh, this particular neuron, and let's focus on that, uh, fires every time it sees the Eiffel Tower. The, the subject sees the Eiffel Tower. So that's the Eiffel Tower neuron, so to speak. We know, you and I know, that this is one of 30,000 neurons that represent the Eiffel Tower. But, but, but the electron uh, happened to see that, okay? Uh, you show the other things, famous places, the pyramids, you know, the Forbidden City, nothing. Eiffel Tower, fires. Showing famous people, nothing. Then they do something very interesting, very clever. They Photoshop Obama in front of the Eiffel Tower. Okay, they probably do it in a better way than that. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, uh, and then what happens? I mean, oh, the, the neuron sees the Eiffel Tower, and of course, beautifully, it, uh, it fires. The Eiffel Tower alone, of course, it fires. Other stuff, not. Obama? Depends. Depends. So, these people were lucky. You're right, it depends. Uh, you know, the, there was an 8% eight, eight chance that, that it would happen, and it did happen. That the, the neuron fired, okay? So, so can you believe this? I mean, you know, uh, I, can, you know I get this in the eyes when I say this. Uh, you know, this poor guy learned that Obama has been to Eiffel Tower. And these neuroscientists, these lucky bastards, okay, they, they found out, but experimentally that he did. It is amazing. You know, this is an amazing moment, I think, in science, right? You know, that, that this can be done, right? And this was done uh, four years ago. You know, so, so this is, I think this is, this is fantastic. This is, you know, this was great, uh, great, uh, uh, so, Association in, 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 in assemblies means things that are related overlap, okay? And uh, another theorem that we can prove is that association in assemblies uh, uh, also is, uh, is preserved very well, okay? So it's, uh, it seems to be very well preserved under, under projection. Okay. How about other operations? Uh, there are a couple of other operations. I'll give you the most important one, merge. Okay, what is merge? Merge is that you have two established assemblies in two different areas, X and Y. And then, in adjacent area A, you create a new assembly Z, which has the property that it has tight uh, interconnections with both X and Y. Okay? It's sort of, you know, a double a degrees projection. Right? You know, it's really a projection that creates from two things, one. If you think about it, you are computer scientists, right? This is how the internal node of a tree is, 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 is created. Right? Now you are creating structure, not just copying. Okay? You are creating structure. Because Z is uh, an internal node from the leaves X and Y. And now, you, now Z can, be, can create another, so you can build a hell that is this way. And you and I know that our mind, mind build, does build hierarchies, okay? And uh, in some sense, only our brain builds hierarchies, build, build, builds large hierarchies at large scale. Okay? Uh, and merge, as I told you, it's the most complicated of operations. Uh, you start with two areas, with, with two, project, two uh, assemblies that are projected here, and now these copies merge with this uh, merge to create this new assembly uh, that has uh, 
very close back and forth con interconnections with these two assemblies. Okay? And this is how uh, hierarchies are built. Okay, so uh, the assembly card is recapitulated, this project associated, pattern complete. Uh, pattern complete is an interesting operation. Uh, from by firing, let's say, 10% of an assembly, you can create the whole assembly. Okay, so that, that's, that's extreme stability. Right, I know that, that, that you. Uh, and this means that if you, you know, how do I, you know, so when I meet somebody in a conference, right, you know, so I say, he's in AI, he's German, I know, what I'm doing is I am, I am, uh, uh, I am uh, firing assemblies that are, that are, that are, uh, that are, that are, that are, okay, finally, so, you know, then, you know, okay, it's, it's, I remember that. Okay. So that's, uh, um, okay, uh, so there is merge, and there is, uh, uh, a couple of other operations that I'm not talking here, but so these, all these, we know from simulations that they are, and proofs, and actually theorems, that they are plausible, okay, that they can be compiled. These, we need them, as you can imagine. Every, uh, every programming language will need some kind of, 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 of control structure, right? So, activate X, this is a, uh, yeah, an instruction that activates, uh, activates uh, 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 a particular assembly. Read, it means where, in which brain region, brain areas is there assembly, uh, assembly uh, activity right now. In this hint, it means that one of these red arrows, it's not valid now, okay, for this time. Uh, so we need these three operations, for which I have no uh, Motiv no, I have no neural motivation uh, except that without them I don't have a language, okay, programming language. And uh, so now the question is how powerful is the system? The short story is it's Turing complete, okay, so you know that, that it, uh, it can perform arbitrary, arbitrary square root and space computations under federal assumptions. So, in other words, you know, this, this hundreds of operations create a powerful system, okay, that can do uh, many things. Okay, uh, you are asking me, you may be asking where am I going, I'm, 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 okay, and uh, where I want to go is language, okay? Uh, uh, when I told, when I tell my new science friends that I'm interested in language, they scold me, okay, they say, wow, language is the hardest thing that any brain has done, you know. Why don't you wait until we figure it out? And then, uh, so you know, this should be the last, the last cherry on the, on the cake, okay? You know, so then we'll, we'll, we'll sit back, light a cigar, and talk about language if you want, okay? You know, so that, you know, but I really think that that's not the case, you know, that that's wrong, okay? Uh, first of all, in order to understand brain, you have to understand the environment, okay? And that's, that's how neuroscience has been working for 150 years. Uh, and a language is an environment. But of all the environments, it has been created by us. And it has been created a few thousand generations ago. So as a result, it's a last minute adaptation. And it co-evolved with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with us, okay? It evolved so to exploit the brain strength. As a result, language holds the secrets. Language reflects the brain. Language is what it is, so babies can learn. Okay, so it's, you know, it's an invaluable lens for studying the brain, okay? And there, is, there are amazing recent experiments which I'm going to show you. So let me show you this first. Uh, this text pulsates at 4 Hz, okay? 4 Hz is, should be familiar because this is, this is the frequency with which I'm speaking, okay? 4 Hz, I'm telling you 4 syllables every second, okay? And that's, the inversal, okay? In Hebrew, in English, in Greek, uh, Greek probably is 4.5, okay? But, but, uh, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, whereas uh, this text, uh, passes at a dozen times faster, so, you know, the, or tries to, okay? So, at 50 hertz, okay? That's the rhythm of spike in all right? So, remember the ratio, uh, 12, right? And, you know, so, the question is, uh, so it's, it's, uh, 12 is an interesting, interesting number, okay? These are called, uh, not gamma, theta, 
sorry. Uh, these are, uh, okay, these are, these are the gamma oscillations, and the previous one are called the theta oscillations. Um, okay, good. And so let me show you, let's, let me show you a very interesting experiment. Uh, so I show you the one idea, and you know, the one paper and the two experiments that completely so, you know, define this work and motivated it. Uh, uh, this is, I know, I chanced into, into this man's stock looking for something else, okay? And, 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 and this completely changed my attitude. Uh, so here's an amazing experiment. Uh, 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 Pepper, he's a famous uh, cognitive neuroscientist, uh, anyway. Uh, uh, he's working on language the last, uh, the last two years. What he did is uh, he created tapes in six different languages in which uh, 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 a speaker in a very monotone voice, modulated to be very monotone and disjointed, uh, say individual words, okay? Single syllable words. So the first one could be Fred at four hertz. Fred, so that's imagine, imagine being sort of, you know, in, in a scanner and then hearing this, okay? So, you know, uh, so it's not, not, not a good living, right? I mean, you know, for 20 minutes, right? I mean, so, uh, uh, so then what he did, he did this with, with literally hundreds of patients with, with using different, uh, different uh, technologies, uh, recording technologies. Uh, and uh, then he took all this data and uh, Fourier transformed it. And as a result, surprise, there was a peak in the spectrum at 4 hertz, of course. Right, because every four times every second, we have to say, what does it mean? Okay, so and we and we and we fetch the word from our lexicon. Right, so that's that's a nice start. Then he did, of course, something very very clever. Uh, he repeated, except that every four words they made sense. They were a sentence, and they were a sentence that had two phrases: "Bad cats eat fish." Okay, and he continued this for twenty minutes. And then he took the Fourier spectrum. And what did he find? There were three peaks. At four, because you still have to fetch. But there was a peak at one. Why is that? Because once every second, these people say, ah, sentence. And twice every second, these people say, a phrase. It's fish. OK? So here is what I think happens. They build trees. These subjects are building trees. And what we see is the, so, you know, is the, is the, is the distant echo, that's what was the of the of the of the of the of the of the building, okay? Of the, of the building building uh, activity. Is this clear? That's that's my interpretation. Okay, so I remember. Two years ago, uh, I was at a conference, and my chairman was, was Chris, uh, was, was a famous linguist, Chris Manning, uh, and, and we had lunch afterwards, and I don't know what came to me, but uh, that was three years ago, at uh, the Science Institute, and uh, uh, I, during lunch, I left my fork, I looked at him in the eye and said something like, for the love of God, Chris, do we have trees in our brain? And uh, Chris Manning, who is not a Chomskyan, he's not a fanatic, he's not a tree fanatic at all, so you know, he told me, yeah, I think we have trees in our brain. Okay? So, my question is, uh, how are these trees created? Could it be that assemblies play a role? In other words, now, we have the picture, we know where these trees are created, we know where the different nodes of the trees are created, but we don't we have a static picture, we don't know the dynamics, okay? we don't know the algorithm by which they are created. And the question is, and how fast can this be done? Recall that gamma over by theta, in other words, the amount of time, the number of spikes we have between two syllables, is 12, okay? So what can, what can we do with 12 steps? And the answer is, what can we do assembly? We can do the assembly operations. Conversion about the dozen steps. Okay. Uh, so here is another beautiful experiment. It, you know, which will happen uh, before. 
Imagine that you read, you have to read the subjects, the subjects actually here in the following, the following sentences, the ball hit the track, versus the track hit the ball. Okay? And it turns out that the different areas of the superior temporal gyrus responded to track in the two sentences. Okay? So in other words, the brain immediately hears this and says, okay, wait a minute, track here is the subject, okay? And the ball is over. Okay, so there are different places for that. Ah. What is even more surprising, and Chomsky will not like it, is that the first area also is to the track was hit by the ball. In other words, our brain uh, knows the deep object, not the object. Okay, it knows the real object in the sentence. Okay, you know, so it says, forget the, for, you know, forget the stupid passive voice maneuver. So, you know, track is object here. Okay? Uh, so, uh, Another, you know, more, uh, more, 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 more experimental results. Here is, here is the point. That we have an area here called Wernicke's area. It's right here. Which, uh, Wernicke's area, which we know for, uh, that, that basically is where word selection for in our sentences is. We have another area here called Broca's area, which we know that's where grammar works, okay? That's where, uh, you know, if somebody has a region there, they, uh, they understand every word in the sentence, but they cannot put it together. They, they don't know, so you know, if the boy chases the girl or the ch girl chases the boy. Okay. Uh, and uh, we know, furthermore, that there is uh, a, uh, uh, an incredibly... Uh, okay, this is our left hemisphere. Our left hemisphere is different from our right hemisphere. We are unique with that. The, the rat's left hemisphere is the same as the right hemisphere. The humans have only a symmetry. And the symmetry, a symmetry focuses in this bundle here, which was our quadrifasciculus. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and this, and this, uh, and this, uh, uh, and, and it is uh, much more strong in the left hemisphere than in the right hemisphere. This is a bundle of axons that go from Berger's area to Broca's area. Okay? Uh, do you have three more minutes? So uh, I'm, almost, I'm almost done. We have five more minutes. Okay, excellent. Thanks. Uh, good. So, uh, so the point is that we know all this, and we know that uh, every time a sentence is completed, this fires. Sorry, this fires, and every time a, a phrase is completed, some part of this fires, and we know that. We know that uh, that uh, that uh, burning as area contains the various constituents of the sentence, the verb, and so on. What we lack is uh, the dynamics of this. Okay, you know how it happens, what makes it happen, what kind of spike makes it happen. Okay. So here is a modest proposal. You know, it's it's utter speculation. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's a conjectural architecture for syntax. Uh, so basically, I'm going to tell you how I think language works, okay? Uh, the warning is that I'm going to tell you a very humble part of language, okay? How you build a tree. Uh, language is everything else, right? You know, language is uh, sort of, you know, has amazing complexity beyond that, okay? You know, how do you find the parts of the sentence and so on. You know? I'm going to, go, I'm, I'm going to, to, uh, uh, to uh, focus on the generation of the sentence, not the parsing of the sentence, because frankly, I think that that's the basic thing, and parsing is some kind of reverse engineering of that, okay? Uh, understanding the sentence. And uh, so imagine, so I think the most basic thing in language, okay, is you see a fact, and you want to remember it, okay? You want to remember that your grand grandchild kicked the ball. Okay? So how do you do that? You create the thing. All right? So, first of all, you say, what is this act? Okay, you first find the verb, I think. Okay, because the verb is the queen of the sentence, right? I mean, so, uh, uh, so you look for the verb. It's say, hit, strike, kick, kick. Okay, kick. Kick is the verb. And it's projected there. It's projected from the, uh, from the medial temporal lobe, where I for tower was, to the superior temporal gyrus for vertical area. It's also projected in the verb part of the, of the vertical area. Uh, then you say, 
kid, you look again, uh, that's kick, you, you look again, kick, girl, boy, boy. Okay, so you project, find it, you project it. The same here, ball. These are all done in parallel, of course. Then uh, you do a merge and uh, you create the verb phrase in the, in the, in the, in the posterior broadcast uh, 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 area. And next you create a sentence. Uh, these are the projection operations of the game that I talked about, and this is the merge operation. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, then, of course, you have to say this, right? And the boy, the boy kicked the ball, correct? And how do you do that? Uh, this fires then depends if you are if you speak English or Japanese. Up to here, I believe that it's the same if you are German, English, Japanese, Greek. Okay? It's exactly the same. Now, what, you, what your mother taught you comes into play, okay? Do I start with the subject and go to the verb and go to the object as in English? Do I go subject, object, verb as in Japanese? Or what, okay? Or six, per, or six or five of the six are possible, okay? Permutations. So, basically, this fires, and maybe this is inhibited for per part, and then boy comes out, and comes back to this part, and now it fetches the methods for articulating boy, okay? Over here, other things happen, like it's adorned with uh, a determiner like that, or the little, okay, or something like that. The little boy kicked, okay, so you know, the boy, okay? So, uh, uh, in any event, uh, that's a scenario which I don't think, uh, uh, it's probably the first time that such a, such a detail is in the scenario, even in this gross detail, uh, has been proposed, that can tell you how this, uh, 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 how this happened. Uh, so, this is, for me, the most fascinating part of all. There is this and quite a fascicles, okay? This is quite means actions, means connections. This is the most giant quiet thing in every animal, any animal. Okay, it's called a quite a fascicles. It is 60% to 100% larger in the left hemisphere. Uh, uh, and and, uh, and uh, uh, what does it do, okay? In some sense, it does merge, okay? We know that merge can be done without it, okay? So some, it's, it's something else. Uh, you know, in your study, so I, I, could, I could go on forever talking about our color fascicles. Let, let, let me not start this lecture, okay? So let me, let me conclude. Uh, 125 years ago, two great scientists, Camilo Golgi and, uh, and uh, Ramon Cajal, Santiago Ramon Cajal, uh, saw this picture, okay? Uh, Gorgi created it and, 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 uh, and Kahal uh, saw it afterwards. And basically, uh, Gorgi, what it saw, he saw this, okay? And, uh, and realized that the brain is a network, okay? Yeah, there are these masses called neurons, but who cares, okay? Network, okay? It's a network. So he said, this is a network, folks, and you should start this network. Whereas Ramon Kahal saw the same picture and focused on this. He said, my God, this is the neuron. This is, this, is the, this is the element of, of, of thought, okay? And, and, uh, and uh, he said, this is the neuro folks, and you should spend the next 10, 100 years uh, studying. And I mean, who was right? Okay, they were both who were right, and they were both who were wrong for so vehemently hating the other's opinion, okay? Because they had a, they had a homeric fight at, at the Nobel ceremony, okay? So, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, I mean, you know, but, in some sense, Santiago Cajal, Santiago Ramon Cajal was right, because uh, there were thousands of physicians ready to study the cell, and there were not thousands of physicians ready to study the network in, uh, in uh, 1819, okay? And as a result, uh, so, you know, what we have now, the next hundred years, uh, was, uh, was Ramon Cajal's uh, triumph, right? So, I guess what I'm saying is that um, maybe, it's, maybe it's populations that we should focus on, okay? So there's populations on humans. 
Great. Uh, and uh, to conclude, uh, uh, the study of brain is, is, is uh, first of all, irresistible, number two, impossible. Okay, you know, so um, uh, a service center operation being one productive path to thinking about computation in the brain, are we receive so much as logic? Okay, that's, that's, that's our ambition. How do assemblies learn and predict? This is what we want to find out. My suspicion is it's not done through operations, it's done through uh, things that would remind you more of deep learning than, 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 than the calculus that I showed you. Uh, and how can one test, verify, falsify the assembly hypothesis to experiments? Uh, uh, you know, this month uh, we have this is the beginning of a new grant that we have with neuroscientists, with the cognitive neuroscientists from, uh, from uh, CUNY, from the City University of New York, uh, whose goal is to, to uh, run experiments uh, trying to find assemblies in action. Okay. So this is, uh, this is the team, and uh, thank you very much.